subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo here are the top stories Incessant rains block roads for schools to shut in southern India. Pakistan hikes petroleum levy vegetable prices soar as food crisis looms amid floods. And Sri Lanka gains IMF's provisional agreement for 2.9 billion US dollars loan. And now for all the details. Several states in India are reeling under the impact of monsoon rains. Sudden heavy showers on Thursday prompted authorities in southern Tamil Nadu state to shut down schools and colleges, while waterlogging led to traffic snarls in Bangalore city and compelled most people to stay indoors. Sudden heavy showers lashed several districts of India's southern Tamil Nadu state on Thursday. prompting authorities to declare a holiday for schools and colleges amid forecast of more rainfall school children and locals in milai dathurai district were seen heading home carrying umbrellas amid torrid showers in the wake of the situation the weather department also advised fishermen not to venture into the sea torrential rains in bengaluru city in neighboring karnataka state led to water logging and traffic snarls Residents waded through knee-deep water with their carts and two-wheelers, while others were compelled to stay indoors with water seeping into their residences. I did not expect that this has to be like this even today. Yeah, because the rains were actually yesterday, day before yesterday, and it is actually two days now, and we still have the same situation. It's feeling bad for it. I mean, I have booked a court and I'm not able to go now. Meanwhile, in northern Pragrat city, water level of River Ganga reduced, but left many homes muddy and dirty. People were seen cleaning their homes and said they were receiving contaminated water for drinking. Seasonal monsoon rains from June to September cause deaths and mass displacement across South Asia every year, but they also deliver more than 70 percent of India's rainfall and are crucial for farmers. In news from Pakistan, thousands of people displaced due to unprecedented flooding in Pakistan are struggling without access to food, clean water, shelter, or basic health care, and have pleaded for immediate help. A doctor in Hardesit Sin province said they are receiving a large influx of patients, most of whom are suffering from stomach illnesses, probably due to the current unsanitary conditions brought about by the floods. Displaced people in flood-battered southern Pakistan were seen seeking shelter under makeshift plastic tenting, together with their belongings and farm animals. Torrential rains and flooding have submerged a third of Pakistan and killed more than 1,100 people. Wednesday's flooding was caused by water gushing down from mountains between the provinces of Balochistan and Sindh, which has already received 466 percent more rain than the 30-year average. A villager in Sindh's hard-hit Shikarpur district said, "Flood water had swept away houses and ruined household goods, and appealed to authorities for help." ये असा पानी आयो है इतने सैलाब क्यों आने असा जो जगह यो सब भर जी वे आने किरण ते या तैयार है ना संजा सामान भी ते फाथ लेना आने सब पुसी वे आ गरीब आयो असा जो मदद करो। Those displaced in Sindh's Jakababa district bemoan the conditions of their temporary shelter in a school. and lack of food to feed their families is school mein kuch bhi sahulat nahi hai is school mein aa to gaye hain lekin khane peene ka koi sahulat nahi hai is is school ke aane se khane peene se hamare ko zehar do mar jaye wohi acha hai chote chote bacche yahan pe zaleel hain machhron pe aur bahut gandagi hai idhar meanwhile a doctor at a local hospital said they are receiving a large influx of patients most of whom are suffering from stomach illnesses such as diarrhea probably due to the current unsanitary conditions brought about by the floods more news from pakistan in yet another step to fulfill imf conditions for resuming a bailout package for crisis hit pakistan the government on thursday raised prices of all petroleum products for the next fortnight the price of petrol was raised by 2 rupees per liter and high speed diesel by 2 rupees 
The Pakistan government on Thursday raised prices of all petroleum products including price of petrol by rupees 2.07 per liter and the price of high speed diesel by 2.99 for the first half of September a statement issued by finance division said Petrol will now be available for rupees 235.98 per liter the new price of high speed diesel will be rupees 247.43 per liter the prices of all petroleum products were increased despite a decline in global oil rates mainly in line with commitment with the international monetary fund fuel prices have been increasing from the last week of may to fulfill imf conditions for resuming a bailout package this comes at a time when pakistan is experiencing its worst floods in decades that has also created food shortages amid the financial crisis vegetable and fruit prices have soared in markets across pakistan as devastating rain ruin crops and disrupt supplies pakistan's 222 million people are already facing rampant inflation with consumer prices up 24.9% year on year in july The economy is in turmoil with fast depleting foreign reserves and a record depreciation of the rupee against the US dollar. Barish ke baad ye mal short ho gaya, raste kharab ho gaya, ye full mul sara tuta hua hai. Iske wajah se mal kam aa raha hai, iske wajah se mehngai hai. Mal jitna kam aayega itna mandi mein shortage hoga. Tomatoes and onions are among the most common ingredients in Pakistani cooking and tens of thousands of tons of each are consumed each month. Officials say that more than 2 million acres of agricultural land have been flooded, destroying most standing crops and preventing farmers from sowing new ones. In Dera Ismail Khan in central Pakistan along the Indus River, warehouses storing vegetables are already emptying out. Pakistan's agrarian sector powers the economy and feeds the people, accounting for more than a fifth of the country's output, employing up to 40% of the workforce. and producing goods worth 80 billion dollars annually Baloch activists staged a demonstration in the United Kingdom this week to highlight Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan including the issue of enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings They demanded the immediate withdrawal of the occupying forces from the region while urging the international community to intervene <laughs> Members of the Baloch National Movement in the United Kingdom recently held a protest in London city on International Day of Victims of Enforced Disappearances to highlight gross human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan. The protesters blamed the Pakistan army which operates with impunity in Balochistan has been committing genocide of innocent Baloch people raising concern over several cases of extrajudicial killings and forced disappearances rape and fake encounters in the region they demanded the immediate withdrawal of the occupying forces of pakistan while urging the international community to intervene for the release of missing persons activists have long accused that baloch people have been targets of so called military operations ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the pakistan security forces They blame thousands have been internally displaced because of armed conflicts and army operations over the years. In news from Sri Lanka, the International Monetary Fund on Thursday agreed to provide Sri Lanka a loan of about 2.9 billion US dollars over 4 years under a preliminary agreement to help the crisis hit country tight over its worst economic hardships. The agreement is subject to approval by IMF management and its executive board. Crisis hit Sri Lanka has reached a preliminary agreement with the International Monetary Fund (IMF) for a loan of about 2.9 billion dollars. The global lender said on Thursday, the agreement is subject to approval by IMF management and its executive board, and is contingent on Sri Lankan authorities following through with previously agreed measures, including financing assurances from official creditors. A statement said that the objectives of Sri Lanka's new fund supported program are to restore macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability outlining a 48 month long arrangement under the IMF's extended fund facility. The IMF program will aim to raise government revenue to support fiscal consolidation, introduce new pricing for fuel and electricity, hike social spending, bolster central bank autonomy and rebuild the country's depleted foreign reserves. 
This came after President Ranil Vikramasinghe announced an interim budget this week, which includes a hike in value-added taxes. Sri Lanka needs to restructure nearly $30 billion of debt, and Japan's finance minister Shunichi Suzuki this week offered to lead talks with the other main creditors, including India and China. Sri Lankans have faced acute shortages of fuel and other basic goods for months, leaving it in political turmoil and hit by runaway inflation, which is now at almost 65% year-on-year. Moving on. Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey is expected to visit Nepal on September 4 amid concerns of a recruitment of Nepal's Gurkhas into the Indian Army under the new military hiring scheme Agnipat. During the five-day visit, General Pandey will be conferred the title of Honorary Chief of the Nepal Army, a customary tradition between the armies of the two sides, which share very close ties. He will also hold talks with top political and military leadership. In line with the 1947 India-Nepal-UK agreement, India recruits Nepali soldiers for its Gokha regiments with equal benefits and pension facilities. Reports suggest Nepal's Foreign Minister Narayan Khadka earlier this month met Indian Ambassador Naveen Srivastav and raised concerns over the Agnipat scheme that will hire soldiers for only four years with no provisions of pension. Gurkha soldiers have historically served for much longer terms in both the Indian and the British armies. Moving on, the early harvest of sugarcane is in full swing in parts of Bangladesh where farmers are busy harvesting the commercially important sugar crop. In Bangladesh, the harvesting season of sugarcane usually extends from September to March. The tall tropical perennial plant is hitting the markets in capital Dhaka. Traders were seen loading bundles of sugarcane onto their tricycles at a market in Dhaka. Sugarcane is an important industrial and cash crop and contributes to the economy of the country. The government is emphasizing the attainment of self-sufficiency in sugar and jaggery production by boosting up the sugarcane production in the country. India is rapidly relying on startups as it strives to reduce carbon footprints in the country by adopting eco friendly measures. Bamboo India is one of the many startups which support the Indian dream by steering away pollution one bamboo toothbrush at a time as it boasts of being a zero waste company. India is rapidly relying on startup as it strives to reduce carbon footprints in the country by adopting eco-friendly measures. With more than 60,000 startups in India, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has labelled the current decade a decade in which he added new unicorns are coming up every few weeks. Bamboo India is one of the many startups which support the Indian dream by steering away pollution, one bamboo toothbrush at a time as it boasts of being a zero waste company. Uh, we are only exporting 4% to the global market. So I thought, uh, why not the things we should take up? Because uh, this is something uh, directly related to the farmers. Uh, you can uh, have lots of angles towards it, like Plastic Free India, or Swachha Bharat Mission, or Atmanirbhar Bharat, or Skillful India. So all those missions can fulfill with this uh, uh, bamboo. So that's why I started uh, uh, this venture in bamboo. Indian capital New Delhi saw the Startup Summit, which is an annual event where several startup entrepreneurs exhibit their products and services. Indian startups raised 5.8 billion US dollars in March and April, down about 15% from the corresponding period last year. Data from Venture Intelligence shows. India is creating Redmo Unicorn startup worth 1 billion US dollars or more at a dizzying speed as foreign capital floods in. That's on back of an astonishing pace of digital adoption. India boasts 550 million smartphone users compared to 250 million at the end of 2015, as per CounterPoint research. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button